Hello health champions. When it comes to burning belly fat with exercise, there's probably more misinformation out there than any other topic I've ever seen. So today I want to go over how it really works so that you can understand it and get the results that you want. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Ekberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. There are probably millions of videos and articles and lists online that tell you that you can lose belly fat, you can get from here to here on one minute a day for a week. And the problem is that 99% of those videos and lists they're lying, they're incorrect, and most of them talk about doing some silly crunch or some abdominal workout, right? It just doesn't work like that. About 1% of those videos and lists and articles talk about aerobic exercise, and that 1% is the correct one. But today we want to go over and understand why does it work that way and how do we optimize that? The belly fat is really two types of fat. First we have the subcutaneous, that's the one that you can grab. Subcutaneous simply means under the skin. So if the white line here represents the skin, the next thing in would be subcutaneous fat. And then you have your muscle, the rectus abdominis, which is the six pack in people who have trained it a lot and who don't have any subcutaneous fat to speak of to cover it up. And then the next layer in is the visceral fat. And the subcutaneous is what you can grab, but the visceral fat is what gives you the big midsection. And the visceral sitting next to the organs, visceral means organs, that's the dangerous kind. And it's dangerous because of the way it got there. It's not the fat itself that's dangerous, but the hormones that gave rise to it. Visceral fat is very specific. It's very clear why it got there. There are two hormones called insulin and cortisol. Insulin results from eating frequent meals and high carbs, and cortisol is a stress hormone that drives up blood sugar and further increases insulin. And once we have visceral fat or organ fat, the first organ to get affected usually is the liver. And the vast majority of people with a big midsection is going to have a fatty liver. If they don't drink, it's going to be non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If they drink, it could be a combination of alcoholic and non-alcoholic. And if you have visceral fat, there is no amount of crunches in the world that's going to solve that problem. The only thing that's going to take care of it is to reduce the insulin resistance. And in order to do that, we have to reverse the thing that brought it on in the first place. And because insulin and cortisol is the cause, we have to have a dietary intervention. If it was sugar and carbs and frequent meals that caused it, we have to undo that. We have to eat fewer meals and less carbs and less sugar. And it's not that exercise has no impact on insulin resistance, because it does, but it might be like 5% versus 95%. So we can still exercise and get some benefits if we do it the right way. One more thing before we get to the five top exercises. We have to understand aerobic versus anaerobic exercise because that's the whole difference between burning fat or burning glucose, between increasing or decreasing insulin resistance. Aerobic means with air, with oxygen. When we're going at a gentle pace, we can breathe fast enough, the lungs can provide enough oxygen that the mitochondria can burn fat almost exclusively. They're always going to burn a little bit of a mix with fat and glucose, but if you're fat adapted and you're truly aerobic, you're going to be 
in the 90% range of fat burning. And when we stay in that mode, when we can burn fat with oxygen and provide enough fuel without eating any additional carbohydrate or without making any additional cortisol, now we can use up the fat stores and we're not going to trigger any insulin. So this type of exercise is actually reducing insulin resistance and that's what we want. One rule of thumb is that your heart rate is going to be about 120 or less when you're doing aerobic exercise. The other way you can tell is that you're not huffing and puffing, that you're breathing comfortably, that you could speak almost a complete sentence while you're doing it. Another way you know is that you can keep it up for a good while. Because you're not straining and exhausting the body, 30 to 90 minutes or even longer is not a problem. And once you're done with it and you can sit down for a few minutes, then you're as fresh as when you started. Anaerobic, on the other hand, is a completely different animal and it means without oxygen. Now we switch to from burning fat to burning primarily glucose. And the reason is that when we don't have oxygen, now we've entered an emergency mode. The oxygen and the fat isn't enough to fuel the body. So now we have to find another source of fuel, which is glucose, which we can, we can split glucose. We can use glycolysis and we can generate some energy in the absence of oxygen. But now we're burning through the glucose pretty quick, so the body is gonna try to compensate and replenish the glucose with gluconeogenesis, and there's a hormone called cortisol that it uses to do that. And now with cortisol involved raising blood sugar, we're actually gonna start increasing insulin resistance. So this exercise is accomplishing what we want in burning belly fat, this one now becomes counterproductive. Ballpark, your heart rate's gonna be about 120 to 160, and most people are probably gonna keep it up for about 15 to 30 minutes, maybe 45 if you're strong-willed, but point is you can't keep it up as long as you can the aerobic. And afterwards, you're gonna be exhausted, and you're gonna need some time for recovery. If you wanna burn belly fat through exercise, the number one thing to do is walking or something like it, something of a similar intensity. And again, it meets all the criteria for aerobic exercise that we just talked about. Number two, if you have some home equipment like a treadmill or an elliptical or a stationary bike, those are also great tools. Those are great ways of exercising as long as you still keep it aerobic. So the intensity needs to be similar to walking or at least not where you start huffing and puffing, at least not for more than maybe a few seconds or a minute here and there. Exercise number three, crunches, planks, Pilates, and core strength. Now, that's still a good exercise. It's not gonna help you specifically with belly fat or insulin resistance, but it's still a very good thing to do because it's not gonna hurt you to do some core strength while you're already improving your insulin resistance. And here's why core strength can be so beneficial. It has some obvious benefits from strengthening your back, reducing back pain, being able to lift and bend better, but really, when you're working the core and the spine, the better your core is working, the better it is connected signal-wise to the brain. So the stronger your core is, the stronger your brain is, basically. And if you do some yoga and you get a flexible spine, that's even better, because now if you have range of motion and control through that full range of motion, now your brain is working really well. And why do we want a working brain in this regard? Because a strong brain is better at inhibiting the stress and it's better at limiting the cortisol. So you can actually, indirectly, you could help your insulin resistance by building a stronger brain. But again, this is not the primary way that 
you get a flat belly. Exercise type number four is HIT or high intensity interval training. And this stands in stark contrast to aerobic exercise. So why do we want to do it? Because if we do something like burpees or bike or stairs, running up and down the stairs for a very brief period of time, then we are going to make cortisol, we are going to burn glucose, but we do it so briefly. We do it for only a few minutes and then that cortisol spike is so short that it doesn't matter. But on the other hand, we get some tremendous positive benefits in terms of human growth hormone and BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And these hormones it will increase metabolism, they'll increase fat burning for hours or even days after the workout. So you work out for five minutes and then you burn fat for two days. More so, these two hormones are necessary and will improve your brain's ability to make new brain cells and make new connections. And just like we talked about with the core strength, when you build your brain, it can get better at reducing the stress. And because human growth hormone is fat burning, it can also help improve your overall metabolism. Exercise number five is weightlifting. And weightlifting has a lot in common with high intensity interval training. And if you do it like high intensity interval training, you can actually sort of combine it with HIIT. You can turn weightlifting into HIIT. If you stress your muscles, if you push your muscles to failure, then your body says, oh, I better make more muscle tissue so I can get better at coping with this tomorrow if you plan to do this again. So weightlifting will increase human growth hormone. It will improve muscle tone and muscle building in the process, obviously. And the more we use the body and the muscles to signal, the more muscle tone we have, the more we're also stimulating the brain. So muscle tone equals brain tone, and we again get the benefits of stress reduction. When we build more muscle, we can also improve the metabolism, not just through the growth hormone, but because muscle tissue is more metabolically active. And by making sure that we build some muscle while we're losing fat, we can make sure that we maintain a better ratio of lean mass to fat mass, the body fat percentage. But the way you want to do it is you want to have a pretty high intensity and fairly low reps. It's okay to warm up, of course, and do some warm up reps on, on low weights. But then for the workout, you want to increase the intensity and reduce the reps because that's how you challenge the body to make growth hormone and build muscle. The trap some people fall into is they turn it into circuit training. They go to the gym and there's 10 or 12 or 15 machines and they do 20, 30 reps and they just go quickly from one to the other and now it just turns into another anaerobic exercise. You're not going heavy enough to really challenge your body to build more muscle. You're just sort of exhausting yourself and creating some muscle lactic acid. Here's the truth about burning belly fat with exercise. Number one, crunches don't burn belly fat. Just because you work out a certain muscle like the rectus abdominis, doesn't make the fat travel from the tissue next to it into the muscle to get burned. It doesn't work like that. It follows the blood circulation and it's systemic. Second truth is that to burn belly fat, you have to reduce insulin resistance. Truth number three is that all exercise is stress. So the trick is to exercise in such a way that you maximize the benefits and minimize the stress. And the way to do that is to do mostly aerobic. 
So I put some numbers, they're not exact, but they'll give you an idea of the proportion. So 70 to 80% of the exercise should be aerobic if you're trying to reduce insulin resistance and lose some belly fat. Then you can do some core strength training, maybe 10 to 20 percent. Uh, and the purpose of that is to tone and stimulate the brain. That's the ultimate purpose of all exercise is to stimulate the brain. Number six, you can do some high intensity interval training and some weights, maybe accounting for 10 to 20 percent. And the reason you want to do that is for hormonal benefits, human growth hormones and brain derived neurotrophic factor and also those hormones will help improve your metabolism. Hopefully now you know enough that next time you see one of those crazy thumbnails with a before and after and an outrageous promise you don't have to waste your time even clicking on it. If you enjoyed this video make sure you check out that one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.